Hi there, folks. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think my, um, something weird happened with reception. So I'm going to try and continue, continue reading from um, Women Who Run With Wolves, um, a book that I believe shares some really insightful, um, relevant and exciting ideas. It was written quite a while ago, but um, this reading is dedicated to all the wild women out there um, with a special uh, big bundles of love to my nieces, Fari, Sari, Kavya, <coughs> excuse me, Kavya, Gia, Priya, uh, Pixie and my cousin Roma. Hopefully I haven't forgotten any other little ones there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to continue this um, from here. Um, so the compre comprehension of this wild woman nature is not religion, but, but a practice. It is the psychology in its truest sense. Psyche, soul, ology or logos, a knowing of the soul. Without her, women are without ears to hear, soul talk or to register the chiming of their own inner rhythm. Without her, women's inner eyes are closed by some shadowy lamp and large parts of their day are spent in a semi-paralysed ennui or wishful thinking. Without her, women lose the sureness of their soul footing. Without her, they forget why they're here. They hold on to when they would best hold out. <coughs> Excuse me. Without her, they take too much or too little or nothing at all. Without, the, without her, they are silent when they are in fact on fire. The wild woman is the regulator. She is their heart, the same as a human heart which regulates the physical body. When we lose touch with the instinctive, instinctive psyche, we live in a semi-destroyed state, an image and powers that are natural to the feminine and are not allowed to their full development. When a woman is cut away from her basic source, she is sanitized and her instincts and nature natural life cycles are lost, sub subsumed by a culture or by the intellect of ego, one, one's own or those belonging to others. Wild woman is the health of all women. Without her, women's psychology makes no sense. The wild woman is the prototypical woman. No matter what culture, no matter what era, no matter what politics, she does not change. Her cycle changes, her symbolic representation changes, but in essence, she does not change. She is what she is, and she is whole. She canalizes through women. If they are suppressed, she struggles upward. If women are free, she is free. Fortunately, no matter how many times she is pushed down, she bounds up again. No matter how many times she is forbidden, quelled, cut back, diluted, tortured, touted as unsafe, dangerous, mad, or other degradations, she emanates upwards in women, so that even the most quiet, even the most restrained woman keeps a secret place for the wild woman. Even the most repressed woman has a secret life, with secret thoughts and secret feelings, which are lush wild, that is natural. Even the most captured woman guards a place of the wildest self, for she knows intuitively that someday there'll be a loophole, an aperture, a chance that she will hightail it to escape. I believe that all women and men are born gifted. However truly, there has been little to describe the psychological lives and ways of gifted women, talented women, creative women. There is, on the other hand, much written about the weakness and foibles of humans in general, and women in particular. But in the case of the wild woman, archetype, in order to fathom her, apprehend her, utilise her offerings, we must be more interested in the thoughts, feelings, endeavours and endeavours which strengthen women and adequately count the interior and cultural factors which weaken women. In general, when we understand the wildest nature as a being in its own right, one which animates and informs a woman's deepest life, then we can develop in ways we never thought possible. Psychology which fails to address this innate spiritual being at the centre of female psychology fails women and fails their daughters and their daughters' daughters far into the future matrilineal line. So in order to apply good medicine to the hurt parts of the wild psyche, 
In order to write relationships to wild women, one has to name the disarrays of the psyche accurately. While in my clinical profession, we do have good diagnostic, statistical manual and goodly amounts of different diagnosis, as well as the psychoanalytical parameters which decide, which decide, which define psychopathy and through organisations or lack of it in the objects of the psyche and ego self axis. There are yet other defining behaviours and feelings which from a woman's frame of reference powerfully describe which is the matter. What are some feeling tone symptoms of a disrupted relationship with the wild voice of force in the psyche? <coughs> to feel, think or act in any of the following ways is to be partially severed or lost entirely the relationship with the deep instinctual psyche. Using women's language exclusively, these are feelings extraordinarily dry, fatigued, frail, depressed, confused, gagged, muzzled, unaroused, feeling frightened, fought or weak. Without inspiration, without animation, without soulfulness, without meaning, shame bearing, chronically fuming, volatile, stuck, uncreative, compressed, crazed, feeling powerless, chronically doubtful, shaky, blocked, unable to follow through, through giving one's creative, creative life over to others, life-sapping choice in mates, work or friendship, suffering to live outside of one's own cycle, overprotective or self-inert, uncertain, faltering, inability to pace oneself or set limits. Not insistent on one's own tempo to be self-conscious, to be away from one's God or gods. To be separated from one's verification, drawn far into domesticity, intellectualism, work or inertia, because that is the safest place for one who has lost all her instincts. To feel, to fear to venture by oneself or reveal oneself, fear to seek mentor, mother, father, Fear to set out one's imperfect work before it is an opus. Fear to set out on a journey. Fear for caring for another or others. Fear one will run on, run out, run down, cringing before authority, loss of energy before creative project, wincing, humiliation, angst, numbness, anxiety. Afraid to fight back when there is nothing left to do. Afraid to try the newer, new, fear to stand up, afraid to speak, speak against, sick to the stomach, butterflies sour our stomach, cut in the middle, strangled, becoming conflictory or too nice easily, revenge, afraid to stop, afraid to act, repeatedly counting to three and not beginning, superiority complex, ambivalence and yet otherwise fully capable, fully functioning. These severances are not a disease, not of any era or century. <coughs> Excuse me. Yogi tea. <laughs> These severances are not a disease, not of any era or century, but become epidemic everywhere, anywhere. Women are captured any time the wildest nature has become entrapped. A healthy woman is much like a wolf. Robust, chock full, strong life force, life giving, territorially aware, inventive, loyal, roving, yet separational from the wildest nature causes the woman's personality to become meagre, thin, ghostly, spectral. We are not meant to be puny with frail hair, an inability to leap up, inability to chase, to birth, to create a life. When a woman's lives are in status, in your eye, there's always time for the wild woman to emerge. It is time for creating function in the psyche to flood the delta. How does wild woman affect women? With wild woman as an ally, as a leader, model, teacher, we see not through eyes but through intuition, which is many-eyed. When we assert intuition, we are therefore like the starry night, starry night, we gaze at a world through a thousand eyes. The wild woman carries bundles for healing. She carries everything a woman needs to be and to know. She carries medicine for all things. She carries stories and dreams and words and songs and signs and symbols. She is both vehicle and destination. 
To adjoin the instincts of nature does not mean to come undone, change everything left from right, black to white, to move east to west, or to act crazy or out of control. It does not mean to lose one's primary socialisation or to become less human. It means quite the opposite. The wild nature has vast integrity to it. It means to establish territory, to find one's path, to be in one's body with certainty and pride, regardless of the body's gift or limitations. To speak and act in one's behalf, to be aware, alert and to...